Hi, this is Elsie Clements. Welcome back to my channel. And we're on week two of the vlog series I'm doing on my writing. And the beat goes on. I did not meet my goal for this week at all. I mean, at friggin' all. And I think part of it is has something to do with the fact that I'm losing my job April 3rd, as I've stated this before. So three days out the week, not including Saturday, mind you, because they offer us Saturday overtime, three days out the week, I will be um, working overtime, which unfortunately means that I'm going to try to work at least two and a half hours a week. And then you know, two days out the week, I'll work my normal shift. And then Saturdays, I have the opportunity, most Saturdays, not all of them, to work overtime for at least four hours a day. So the Saturdays I do have available, you know, I have to take advantage and work those days. Then um, the overtime that's available during the week, I have to take advantage of. Because my job is shutting the site, not the, the company itself, but because the site itself is shutting down, I have to take full advantage of working there as much as I, early, as much as I can, no matter how much I really dislike, strongly dislike doing it. Um, I work, to make a long story short, I work in a call center. So call center jobs are very, very stressful. And in my case, I sit there for about, let's see, I work eight. So let's say two and a half hours. I work about 10 hours a day getting yelled at by people for stuff that is completely out of my control. And it is, why is this doing this? Okay, this is new. And it is um, expected of me to put up with that. Then I'm supposed to come home and then try to work on my book. I did not make my quota. So I rearranged my writing planner to at least have book one of the Poseidon series done by February, at least by the end of February. That's what I'm aiming for. Doesn't mean, like I said in my last video, that I'm going to meet the goal. On top of that, I tried to do at least two podcast episodes. Like this is the recording before the podcast episode. So this is the first one. And then um, about two weeks from now, I got to work on another podcast. So I have a great idea what I'm going to do it for this podcast episode, but it's planning on top of the extra work I have to do at my own job. And I try to do these weekly vlogs. Plus on top of that, you know, the part of the reason why my job is very stressful is because it's tax season. Tax season means that people are going to call in and I don't want to reveal the industry until after I'm done working there because I do work for the Department of Education. That's as much info as you're going to get about my job. But um, the whole point is people get really irritable. This is my peak, our peak season. People are going back to school are dealing with taxes and then there's the little stuff in between so with that being said it's a very stressful time of the year i'm working overtime the most stressful time of the year plus i have to file my own taxes because the new tax law i'm pretty much going to get screwed you know i i did some of my tax return but i haven't put i can't put a lot of deductions in like i wanted to like I spent over $300 in physical therapy and I have no idea how to claim that on my taxes. So there's that problem on top of everything else. So yeah, this was just a really, really rough week. I'm hoping, you know, as the title says, as, and the beat goes on, that I do better next, next, um, I can't say words right now. Cause I'm that tired next week I'll be more productive but this week was just pretty much a wash because I'm spending time get preparing for um, going debt free I'm trying to pay off all my credit card debts I'm trying to um, make it so I don't spend as so much money because I'm gonna be shilling pretty much looking for work and I don't know if anybody ever uh, any of you guys have looked for work 
it's not only is it stressful, it's frustrating as mess because the skills you have at one job does not pertain to the other job, even though it's all in the same industry, but you don't know no software. It's in most jobs these days are not willing to train you to do stuff. So that means you shilling for extra money to learn how to be trained in certain fields. And it's looking for, I'm just going to say in short, besides, you know, I want to become a full-time writer. Looking for a job is like annoying. And I'm trying to see it as a blessing more than anything else because that does give me time to work on my writing, but still. <sighs> anyway, I'm done shilling. Um, I'm done like complaining too much about losing my job, but I promised to give some better updates. You know, this is going to be a very, very short video. I don't have much to talk about. You know, I did get started. Let me say this. I did get started on my writing. It's just that the productivity isn't there. And I think part of it is, as Stephen King and Neil Gaiman says, you have to read in order to write. And I haven't been reading like I normally do. I write, but it doesn't click in my brain for reading because reading does not, reading, when you read, um, I will, reading is not mean you're going to copy someone else's work. In fact, the book I'm reading right now is completely different than the genre I'm writing right now and it's not even a chore to go through it's just different than what I normally read because you know there was a suggestion to read outside of what you're writing it was a Neil Gaiman thing and that's coming up in my series I did want to do you know probably after Camp NaNoWriMo or before Camp NaNoWriMo I haven't weighed out my financial options at the time I do want to take the Neil Gaiman writing master class you know, I do, I, cause he, I, I have a feeling, you know, he, um, did a, he's doing a series on writing the second draft. And ironically enough, in March, I do want to work on my nano book, which is reading and revising the darn thing and putting notes down of what I'm supposed to write and what I can change in the book, you know, and go from there. And I even have the act structures written out of which act I'm supposed to work on for which week so March is going to be insane I probably should push it to April you know in retrospect I probably should only because I know it's, that's the last month before April 3rd and April 3rd is pretty much D-Day for me but I I don't want to overwhelm myself that's the thing I feel like I'm going to overwhelm myself but like I said, that's, you know, down the pipes, I do want to do the um, Neil Gaiman Masterclass. Even one of his tips was to read outside of your genre. You know, I guess it's to prevent you um, copying other works under the same genre. So I'm taking that advice. I'm actually reading a book that, you know, it's still a fantasy book. It's still non I can't, yeah, I'm, I'm terrible at this, but um, it's a fantasy book, let's put it that way. And it's not the same as, let's say, um, basically I'm writing a shifter story and this story isn't a shifter story. It's about, um, what's going, you know, it's about, um, fairies and these humans growing up in this fairy land. And it's not like Tinkerbell fairy tales. This is like medieval-esque magic story. So it's a deep storyline compared to what I'm writing, which is more of a shift of urban fantasy post apocalyptic story. So there are two different genres and it does. And shockingly enough, reading this is actually helping. So I'm going to pursue that particular. If you see my eye going over here, it's because I'm waiting for a message from someone. Um, one second. Um, so with that, I mean, reading is a fundamental cl clue on how you're supposed to write your story. So I think me keep reading this particular genre, which is not even in my genre, it's going to help me. Um, I know I'm more productive, so I'm going to keep, keep that Neil Gaiman, um, tip going. And I will give you guys updates on if I'm going to do the Neil Gaiman masterclass because it's 99 bucks. I don't have a hundred dollars right now to be spending like I like 
like I would spend a hundred dollars normally if I was still working at the same job you know I wouldn't worry too much about it but since you know there's going to be a period of time of unemployment I have to worry I have to you know figure out my finances and I keep talking about this job and I think it's because it's stuck on the front of my mind so I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below um what do you think you would do if you were losing your job and you're a writer um how do you do with how do you cope with that do you focus more on your writing do you focus on work and put your writing on hold um so that's all i'm going to talk about today please like um please like and comment below don't um don't forget to slide, subscribe to my channel please i don't like shilling i really don't but um i it's hard to keep these um, videos and stuff going. You know, I'm already paid, you know, my husband paid for me to get a new Diva ring light, a new camera. So that's a good thing. But, you know, we got it. I got to I want to keep the production going, you know, even just to maintain these videos and to possibly upgrade my computer, which looks like it's not going to happen until 2021. But anyway, um, even three dollars, if you donate for three dollars, that actually goes a long way. I put a link in the description below to my co coffee page three dollars helps so much to keep the channel going this and for my podcast episodes so i will chat with you guys again next week